Shalom brothers and sisters A word This is a word I was speaking and sharing with a brother And I just wanted to share it with the entire house of Yashavrel We're in the book of Mark chapter 6 Third verse Is not this the carpenter the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. One of the things that we see as we read in the book that Yeshua, many call him Jesus, was referred to in the book of Mark chapter 6, starting at the third verse, as the carpenter. When you look in the book of Matthew, he's asked, is not this the carpenter's son? Okay. One of the things we need to recognize, a lot of times when we hear things, we think of it in the context of the physical. We take it on a one-dimensional level. But is it any wonder that before Jesus started his earthly ministry, that the work that he was known to have been doing was that of a carpenter. Because when they listened to him speaking, when they listened to him preaching, when they listened to him healing, they recognized him as the carpenter. Never understanding the power and the truth of what a carpenter is and what a carpenter does. He was also known as the carpenter's son. Now, we know that when our earthly homes, whether we live in apartments or houses, when there's something wrong, we need the carpenter. He's known to restore, rebuild, renew, replenish that which is old and broken down. So is it any wonder that Yeshua was known as the carpenter to some. And even when they referred to him as the carpenter, they never recognized that spiritually he was also a master builder. Many people have houses that the floor, the foundation is shaky. But just like we need an earthly carpenter to come in, and shore up our foundation because of damage, because of wear and tear, because of abuse and misuse. We need that spiritual carpenter to come in and shore up the foundations of our spirits, our minds, and even at times our bodies. That master building. Some buildings are condemned because many people consider them useless. And some people have been condemned by other people. But that master builder, that carpenter comes in and he can do what no other man can do. Many of us don't recognize that sometimes we need that word many times. We need that word of God to come in and do, rebuild, remove those things that are no longer useful. Strengthen and restore, replenish those things that will keep us in our right minds, in our right bodies, in our right states. There are people that want, just like you have people that will come in and destroy your property, you have people who will come in and destroy you if they're allowed to. Remember, Satan is the prince of the air. He works through anybody. He works through their words. Okay, he works through their actions, their deeds. Some people assume because they have a position, they have the right to try to tear you down. They have the right to say certain things, hurtful words. Remember, life and death is in the power of the tongue. But there's a master carpenter that you can go to who will renew, restore. He will tear out that which is of no use and place those things that are needed inside of each and every one of us. The carpenter. Okay. Even God, the master carpenter, the creator of all things, came in. He was the one that set the world in place. He was the one that constructed both man, beast, and everything we see, and even those things that are unseen. But many times the noises of the world come in and they distract us. They make us forget to whom we belong. And remember, just like when something breaks in our houses or where we dwell, 
And we think, I need to get on the phone. I need to find that carpenter, that one, that restorer, that fixer. There's a master carpenter who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And as a matter of fact, he said, do not be conformed to the standards of this world, but be transformed with the renewing of your mind. Why? Because he knew the prince of the air would roam about like a hungry lion seeking whom he may devour. Many of his brothers and sisters need to sit before the carpenter. Some people call him the potter. We need him to remold us, to remove those things that don't serve us anymore. And we've got a carpenter. He's the carpenter of our souls. Remember, he tells us how to dress. He tells us what to look out for. He gives us the right thoughts. And he tells us those things that we should ignore. There are words, there are thoughts. Sometimes we condemn ourselves. But we know if it doesn't line up with the word of God, that's something that needs to be tossed aside. I'm telling you about a carpenter. A carpenter. Some of us, we need the carpenter to come in and open the door of our heart. We need to invite him in to strengthen our foundation. Because there are people, sometimes it's we ourselves. We're not thinking. We got to guard our thoughts. We need that carpenter. That carpenter to come in and straighten us out. To get that plumb line. To line everything up. When you're in a state of confusion. Somebody's lying. Something's been left out. It's crooked. You need that carpenter. He said put line upon line. Precept upon precept. That's that order. That's that precision. Let this mind that be in Christ be in you also. Why? Because the carpenter is with us always. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And when we take those things that confuse and confound, distort, and try to defeat us, and we put it up against the carpenter's plumb line. What's the carpenter's plumb line? It's the word of God. If it does not line up with the word of God, then that's something that's refuge. It's trash. We have to discard it. We're going to go before the carpenters, brothers and sisters. Those things that the world condemns, God will come in and restore. There's a time to plant and a time to pluck up. There's a time to build and a time to tear down. The carpenter knows. And when you refer to the carpenter, that which the world said is no more good, remember, everything you seek was created by the carpenter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. Who's the Word? That's the carpenter of our spirit. So, brothers and sisters, if you find yourself in a dilemma, remember the carpenter. Lay it against the plumb. And if your thoughts condemn you and they don't line up with the Word of God, discard it. If somebody's speaking to you in a manner that you know is not the person God made you, discard it. Lay it against the plumb line. There are people that assume just because they've got a title that they're above you, but they don't know the judge of all judges. And if it doesn't line up with the word of God, that plumb line, remove it. Just because the world condemns something, if God agrees, then you are fine. You lay it against the plumb line of the carpenter. Remember, as long as he is with you, if God is for you, what can man do to you? You be at peace, brothers and sisters, and remember, he is with us. He will never forsake us. And be ye transformed to the renewing of your mind and the regeneration of your spirit, the carpenter of your soul. Let him anchor you in peace. You be blessed. Shalom.